What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me right here at my YouTube channel. This is where I talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, and TV shows. And right now, I'd like to give you guys my thoughts on the first two episodes of Superman and Lois. Now, I am a notorious CW hater. I just don't think the CW makes good DC content. I haven't liked anything. I haven't liked anything. I tried Arrow. I made it through about the first season and a half of Arrow and didn't like it. I tried Flash. Made it through the first, oh, season, maybe season plus of Flash. Didn't like it. Um, let's see. I tried uh, three episodes of Batwoman. Didn't like it. When they recast Batwoman, I tried the first episode. Didn't like it. Legends of Tomorrow tried three episodes. I didn't like it. Supergirl. Man, I wanted to like Supergirl. I wanted to like Supergirl so bad. Supergirl is one of my favorite comic book characters. Honestly, she is. Didn't like it. I gave Supergirl two seasons. Two full seasons. I was in denial about Supergirl. Literally, I was in denial. Like, I thought it was good. And then I had to come to terms with the fact that it wasn't. <laughs> um now with the CW I basically just watched the crossovers and they've all been really bad to be fair they've all been really bad like Crisis on Infinite Earths I know a lot of people were psyched about it it sucked I'm sorry it sucked <laughs> um, guys CW is not good CW is the lowest form of comic book entertainment it's bottom of the barrel comic book entertainment now that being said I don't really have an issue with the CW keep making them keep making them you are introducing people to these characters who probably would have never had any introduction before. So keep making them. I applaud the effort. I'd rather you make something good, but keep making them. That's how I feel about the CW. Now let's talk real fast about how I feel about Superman. Superman is my favorite character in comic book history. And for me, it all started with when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, watching Christopher Reeve's Superman 1978, Superman 2, Superman 3, Superman the Quest for Peace. My Superman fandom started at, at the, as far back as I can remember. As far back as I can remember. I've had, Superman has been a part of my life since the very beginning. <coughs> and then the comics came. The comic books came. I got I got interested in the comics around the time that Legends hit. Uh, that that crossover that involved Darkseid, um, and then I, I kind of read the comics kind of sparsely. You know, every now and then I'd talk my dad into going take me to the comic book store and picking some up, picking up a couple comics. But it was a few years after Legends, what maybe three or four years after Legends, that the death of Superman hit, Doomsday hit, and. I've never really missed a trip to the comic book store since every Wednesday. <laughs> so you're talking, sorry guys, I got a bit of, bit of a cough in my throat. So you're talking, <clears throat> was that 92, um, 2002, 2012? You're talking almost 30 years, <laughs> almost 30 years that I've hardly ever missed a Wednesday. <laughs> Superman is my dude and, and Superman Action Comics and Superman those two books and Justice League Action Comics Superman and Justice League those three books have always been on my pull list always so I haven't missed one of those three books in almost 30 years at any given time there's usually 10 to 15 books on my pull list most of them are DC I've got some Marvel tit titles interspersed in there um, but it's always Superman, Action Comics, and Justice League. That never changes because I'm, I love Superman so much. <laughs> and Man of Steel. Oh, Man of Steel. Man of Steel is my jam. So what did I think of Superman and Lois? Well, it's not the first time we've had a Superman TV show. You know, we've had Smallville. I like Smallville. I did. Um, it was too long. Smallville ran too long. It did. You know, no tights, no flights. At some point, he's got to become Superman, guys, <laughs> and they just didn't want to do that. Um, that you know, this that no tights, no flights moniker became more important than actually progressing the story. Um, Superman and Lois, the further adventures of Superman with Dean Kane, that was my jam growing up. 
Never miss an episode. So this isn't the first Superman TV show. What I liked about this was it did something we haven't really seen from Superman before. That's where Superman and Lois is really strong at this point. <clears throat> is because it's giving us an angle on Superman that we haven't seen in live action. We've seen it in the comics. In the comics, Superman has a teenage son, John. Now he lives a thousand years in the future, or ten thousand years in the future, or however far away the League of Super, or the Legion of Superheroes are. Um, but he lives far, far in the future, and, and he he's able to bounce back and forth between time to visit his dad. Okay, but Superman has dealt with these these um, the issues that a father has in the comics, but never in live action. So they're really able to explore that in this movie, which I really appreciate. Now, I don't count Superman Returns. You know, he wasn't really a dad in Superman Returns. He might have had a son, but he wasn't really a dad. Um, the Richard character was the dad. Um, so, I really liked that aspect of it. And, and, you know, the idea of having two sons. You know, in the comics, he has one son. In, in the show, he has two sons. And one of them looks like he has superpowers. The other one doesn't. Of course, it's the one that does that has superpowers. Is the one who's kind of been an outcast, kind of been shut off from from his family, shut off socially. And the real outgoing, extroverted one, he doesn't have superpowers. So that's kind of an interesting component on it. A little bit predictable, but definitely an interesting component uh, nonetheless. And that's, again, what I've enjoyed most about this show, is Superman being a dad and having to um, reconcile with decisions of fatherhood, um, the challenges of fatherhood. Not just, you know, we can all relate. I've got two kids, and I can relate to the idea of have, finding that work-family balance. And I'm not Superman right superman has to really struggle with that idea of a work family balance going out and saving people versus having that family time which one's more important well to his family him being present is more important but to the world him being superman is more important so that's clear that is an interesting angle that i hope that they continue to to explore and explore well that is the best thing the show has going for it so far now to be clear i've talked about how much i hate the cw and i do i hate it I've liked this so far. I've liked this so far. This has higher production values. Um, it feels different than the CW shows. Now I realize that this is Tyler Hoechlin, the same guy that played Superman in, in Supergirl. By the way, I don't think they're the same Superman. I don't think they are. Someone can correct me on that because I haven't really been watching Supergirl. But I don't think they're the same Superman. I believe that Crisis might have reset everything and now this is a different Superman. And I hope it is because the Superman in Supergirl is a bit of a chump. Um, just based on what I've seen in the uh, crossovers, because I haven't watched the show religiously. But yeah, this show, I've liked it so far. And it pains me a little bit to say, but I have to be honest, right? I can't just have this I hate the CW um, banner in my brain, and anything that comes on the CW I automatically hate. I've got to give it all a fair shot. And I, to be fair, I wanted to give Superman and Lois three episodes... And I think it's going to go well beyond that because it's been it's it's got a lot of promise. Um, even let the Lex Luthor character, um, the idea of him being a Lex Luthor from another dimension, um, from another Earth, here to stop us stop Superman because Superman destroyed his Earth. That reminds me a bit of a comic story that came out in the late '80s. It's actually funny enough. It's a comic book story that introduced Supergirl. Um, but it reminds me a bit of that comic book story. Um, and that ended up not being the real Supergirl. That ended up being a Supergirl created by Lex Luthor from another dimension. So I mean, it makes me wonder if they're going to kind of go that route and, and introduce Matrix Supergirl. I don't know. Probably not. Um, but I don't know. Supergirl's ending. So who knows? <laughs> uh this has promise. This has good stuff in it, and I've enjoyed it. High production values, good storytelling, good acting. Um, special effects have not taken me out of it. It's still a TV budget, but the special effects have been good enough that it's not pulling me out of the show. And finally, um, it just feels like it's better storytelling. 
That's all it comes down to. Is it just feels like it's better storytelling. Um, I don't know. The CW, you get a superpower and you get a superpower. Everybody gets superpowers. And I, I feel like that's where this is going to go. I like, I was telling one of my students who really likes this. I was telling one of my students, I was like, I don't want to rain on your parade, man, but I, I still have zero hope for this. And to be honest, I still, I don't have any hope that this is going to be good long term. And I just don't because the CW is crap. It's crap. When I found out that CW had Stargirl, I about cried because Stargirl season one was so good. And now I have no hope for season two. And as good as Superman and Lois, the first two episodes have been, I still have next to no hope for it. It's off to a good start. It's off to a good start, but I, I, I don't think this is sustainable because these people are creatively bankrupt when it comes to comic books properties. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Um, and, and I do think we're going to get to a point where Lois gets superpowers and and Lana gets superpowers and and both of the Superman kids get superpowers and Lana's daughter gets superpowers. Everybody gets superpowers because that's what they do in the CW. Everybody gets superpowers. Um, yeah, first two episodes, let's, let's, let's wrap this up, let's wrap this up. First two episodes, good. I'm intrigued by Superman being a dad. I'm intrigued by Superman, um, having to split his life between being a father and being Superman. Um, I'm intrigued by Lex Luthor, uh, coming from another dimension to stop Superman. I have no hope that this is going to be good for the duration. What did you guys think of Superman and Lois, the first two episodes? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take on it. I'd love to have a conversation about it. So please let me know what you think below. While you're down there, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out a lot of content, and I want to make sure that you're up to date with everything that I'm doing. And as always, thank you so much for joining me right here at the OQ Review, where we get to talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.